Hey guys, how's it going? It's Vincent here from the creativedojo.net. Today in this tutorial, we're going to be taking a look at how to composite realistic muscle flashes. We'll take a look at how to composite the smoke, add some realistic light fall off and light spills from the muzzle flash. You know, we'll take a look at a whole bunch of little things to kind of make the muzzle flash look a little bit more composited in, more realistic. So let's go ahead and take a look at what we're going to be creating today. So as you can see, we have um, a nice muzzle flash here, re repetitive muzzle flash. We have some smoke flying from the, um, the tip of the gun. We have some realistic lighting on the character when it shoots the gun. We have some realistic light fall off or light spill from the muzzle flash that's hitting our character whenever he's shooting the gun. And you know, we'll take a look at how to set this up. Now when I first started visual effects within After Effects, um, one of the first things I did was uh, muzzle flashes, of course, because it was you know the, the most interesting to do and it seemed very, very easy. After all, it is just one frame of pretty much a light burst from the tip of a gun. So, you know, I did that and it didn't seem very realistic at all and it didn't seem like what I saw in the movies or what other people were doing. So, if that sounds like you, if you think that your muscle flashes aren't looking realistic uh, as much as you want it to be, and mine seems pretty um, okay to you, then this tutorial should be uh, really great for you. It should be getting you on track. So, let's go and take a look at how to do this within After Effects. So, I'm gonna create a new composition by taking our footage here and dragging it into the new comp window or button. Now, I would also like to thank Shutterstock.com for providing the stock footage for this tutorial. It wouldn't be possible without them for this stock footage. Check them out, footage.shutterstock.com. They have a great site for stock footage for all your projects. It's gonna bring uh, our footage into the composition here. And we'll just rename the composition uh, Muzzle Flash Tutorial and hit OK. And we will trim this down to around, uh, let's see. So we'll just scrub through here and we will maybe stop right around here. And we'll focus on this part of the footage here because this is where we want our gun shots to be. So as you can see, we don't really have our characters actually pretending to shoot the gun, but we will add some muzzle flash to make it seem as if they are actually shooting the gun. So as you can see, we just have a footage of um, some SWAT team members or some special forces members just cruising around this warehouse here. So let's go ahead and take a look at what we're going to be doing. So for this tutorial, I'm going to be using footage from Action Essentials 2. And Action Essentials 2 is essentially a stock footage pack from Video Copilot. Um, it includes a ton of fires, explosions, you know, dust, debris, glass, shatters, muzzle flashes, blood hits, um, pretty much everything you can think of for an action movie visual effects. So I would highly take a look at purchasing uh, this pack from Video Copilot. Very, 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 very handy. Go and check it out. The links will be in the video description down below. Now, if you don't have the money or you can't afford Action Essentials 2 and you have Trap Code Particular, go ahead and check out um, Red Giant's Muscle Flashes here. Now, this is actually a, a place where you can download free presets for Trap Code um, as well as other Red Giant products. So, Harry Frank actually made um, a few muscle flashes out of Trap Code Particular. And he also did a tutorial on how to do this on Red Giant TV. That will also be in the video description down below. But he provides these pretty nice uh, free muscle flashes using the chapter particular. So you can use these, render it out, and use those footage for the this tutorial here. So this is a free alternative here, so check it out. So for this tutorial, I'm going to be using Automatic Fire 1, Automatic Fire 2, Powder Hit 6, and the 8mm O2 shell casing here. Now of course you want to experiment and use your own to you know add some more variation. Don't just copy exactly everything I do. But um, so for this case, for this guy here, I'm going to use the automatic fire 01 muzzle flash. As you can see, just some repetitive automatic firing muzzle flashes here. So first things first, let's go ahead and scale this thing up. So when you're compositing muzzle flashes, um, some of the important things to do is to realize in your footage, you know, when is the muzzle flash happening. So if you're using a, you know, a still image, then that doesn't really matter because the muzzle flash will be, you know, wherever your image is. But in this case, we have a piece of footage here that has multiple firings. So what we need to do is we need to mark this particular layer wherever there's a muzzle flash. And that's really going to help us in the long run, as you'll see in this tutorial. So um, I'm going to scrub through this clip here uh, using page down, page up to move by frame. And I'm going to hit the asterisk key on the number pad to place a marker right here where there is a muzzle flash. So I'll move forward using page down. Right here, we have a muzzle flash. So we'll hit the asterisk key. And we'll keep on doing that and marking every single time we see a muzzle flash. 
Now, of course, you can also add muscle flashes by, by using still images of muscle flashes. Muscle flashes usually occur for one frame or maybe two, depending on what you're trying to do. But usually muscle flashes occur in one frame. So um, you're, you're pretty much safe using an image. You don't need to um, have a footage to do that. So feel free to Google search it. So here I have my muscle flashes all, you know, pretty much outlined where the muscle flash occurs at each marker. And I'll just trim this clip down. So let's go ahead and composite this thing in together. So I'm going to go into hit R on the keyboard to rotate it. You know, kind of the same angle as the gun here. So we'll just maybe like that. We'll keep it right at the very tip. And we'll hit P on the keyboard, hold down shift and press R to bring in the rotation as well. So we have the position and the rotation. And now usually you want to track the gun. And if you have a stable shot and the gun's not really moving, then you can track the, you know, track the, the shot here. I don't really have any clear uh, track points here, and I want to show you how to do it manually. So um, in case you need to do it manually, you have the ability to do it manually. But sometimes you can track it if your actor is not really moving and the gun's not really moving. So we set a keyframe for the position and the rotation at this point. Now, we don't have to worry about anything else in between because the muscle flash is only one frame long. So we'll just skip right next to the next marker here. This is when the next fire happens. We will adjust the stock footage here. So we just move this up a little bit. Stay right there. We'll move to the next keyframe. We'll maybe move it up here. Like that. Move to the next keyframe. We'll move it up. And, you know, we'll go back. We should set a rotation keyframe for each so we don't get any weird. Uh, automatic keyframes right here. So we'll set it like that. Move forward here, we'll adjust it. We'll rotate it. Like that. Move forward to the next marker and do the same thing. So it kind of gets repetitive, but for the most part, it should be fine. So what we have right now is essentially a manual track of his gun because we couldn't get some nice track points. So just scrub through it, find some of your imperfections. It's kind of hard to do it frame by frame, but if you just kind of scrub through, you can kind of see which ones look a little bit off. All right, so that's looking pretty good. Let's go ahead and change the transfer mode from normal to add, so it'll blend into your scene better. Sometimes you can use screen, depending on your, your background, your lighting, uh, but in this case, I think add looks best. So now we have a, a little bit better blending. Let's go ahead and you know, we, we can always go back and tweak this a little bit later, but let's go ahead and work on the look of this thing because it looks pretty gross right now. So I'm going to go to Effect, Stylize, and we'll apply a glow. And this is going to be the initial hot glow. So uh, we'll duplicate it again. We'll shut off the second glow. Go back to the first glow here and just play around with the threshold. And maybe increase the radius. We have kind of a hot, warm... Uh, tone for the muzzle flash, but just turn down the intensity a little bit. All right, then we'll turn on our second glow, and this is going to be the, ver the very bright uh, light emission from the lens flare. So we'll crank up the radius, and we will maybe play around with the threshold. You want it to make it kind of warm, kind of lower down the opacity or the intensity. All right, so let's go ahead and do a quick RAM preview. All right, so that's looking, you know, pretty decent. We can go ahead and do some quick color correction because we kind of have this orange frame around our muzzle flash. And that looks okay, but we can fix some of that. So we will apply an effect, color correction, we'll apply curves. Maybe we'll lower it down a little bit. We'll go to the reds and uh, maybe pull it down, maybe increase the reds. Hold down the blues. Let me introduce some green. So it kind of makes it less harsh at the edge, as you can see here. Less red around the edges. And um, you know, we'll, we'll just leave it at that for now. Let's go ahead and take a look at um, creating the you know the overall body reaction to the light. So you, you can always go back and fix the muzzle flash, but overall that looks you know pretty decent to get you started. Um, we won't be focusing on the muzzle flash too much because, um, you know, you want to make the muzzle flash subtle. I think what sells the whole effect is, you know, the whole environment around it. So 
Let's go and take a look at that real quick. So we will go to the special forces uh, reaction or, or base footage with duplicate it. We'll call it, uh, let's see here, light spill 01 for the first character. And we'll get the pen tool here and just start masking out areas where you think the light would react. So in this case, for tutorial purposes, I'm just going to mask out pretty much his whole body, but just make a rough cut and just leave maybe around 10 pixels, 20 pixels of extra leeway room. Hit F on the keyboard and just feather it out. Maybe 120 pixels. We'll change the blending mode from normal to add. So it's going to add this particular mask to our already original uh, slate here. So this is what we have here. And we'll go ahead and go to effect, apply the curves effect again. Maybe we'll darken it just a little bit and we will tint it kind of a warm yellow color, similar to uh, our muzzle flash color. Something like that. And we'll hit T on the keyboard. We'll set the opacity to around 60%. And this is going to be our character uh, whenever he's shooting the gun. So this is where the, um, the markers are going to come in handy here. So around 60% is where I find that um, it looks pretty realistic. So um, we'll start here at this marker here. We'll set the keyframe at 60, all right? So whenever there's a muzzle flash, you want the opacity to be at 60%. And then we'll give two keyframes for leeway, and then we'll fade it down to zero. So I'm pressing page down to move by frame. So we'll go to the next muzzle flash right here at this keyframe. And this is we have a muzzle flash here. So I'm going to set the opacity to, again, 65% or, or whatever it was. We'll move two frames and then we'll fade it off. So essentially, the light spill only occurs for two frames. Um, the first frame is where the muzzle flash is. And then go two frames, set to zero. So it's gonna fade out. Muzzle flash here, um, 65%. Move two keyframes, set it to zero. And you know, it doesn't have to be exact, it doesn't have to be the same values, but definitely give it some variation. So we'll go back here. Set it to 60, move two keyframes, set it to zero. And we'll just keep on doing that. So 60, where the muzzle flash is, move two frames, set it to zero. And this is the last one here. And set it to zero. And then, so now what we have now is pretty much whenever the muzzle flash is firing, um, our, our light spill layer is going to turn on turn off to kind of uh, match what you would see in real life. So now we have a problem that the mask is not sticking to our character. So you could have used the roto brush if it was a little bit easier for you. I mean, I, I probably would have done that too, but we'll just go ahead and animate this mask uh, very roughly. So we'll hit M on the keyboard to show the mask path, set a keyframe, and you know, we'll just move forward and adjust some of these things. So we'll just move it up a little bit and just make sure that it's not too off we don't have to be too exact here around there we'll move this down and i'm using the markers as a guidance because this layer is only going to turn on whatever the muzzle flash turns on anyway so again this is why the markers are very very handy So move this up and we'll maybe adjust these keyframes for the gun. Now, if you want to be more realistic, of course, you would mask out certain sections that would have more uh, light fall off. Like, for example, there would probably be more fall off, uh, brighter fall off near his gun and near his hand than, you know, the back of his helmet. But again, we're not really making it too accurate here. And this is the last one. So we'll just adjust some of this and adjust his helmet. And that's looking pretty good. Maybe we can uh, maybe just lower down the brightness just a little bit. I just feel like it's a little bit too bright. So just like that, we have some realistic flashes on the character whenever he's firing the gun. And this makes it look a lot more natural. And then now let's go and take a look at, you know, our, our powder hit here. 
So here we have a powder hit. And it's nothing more than just a puff of smoke. Right around there. So we'll add this to the tip of our gun. So we will perhaps scale it up. And again, it would be a lot easier if we could track it. But in this case, uh, we don't really have the ability to track it here. So right when he fires the gun, I want it to be almost like right here. So we'll just trim it. Right here is where I want the smoke to be. So we'll just move this right here. We'll set the landing mode from normal to screen. That looks better for smoke. We will put it underneath our automatic fire. So the flare is above the smoke. And when he fires, you can see the smoke kind of bursting out a little bit. Maybe that may be a little bit too much. Maybe we'll just trim it here. Maybe scale it back down to 100. Maybe even smaller. Or we can start pretty small and then animate it larger. So maybe 75%. So he's going to shoot. There's some smoke coming out. And we can track this manually. So we'll hit P on the keyboard. Um, hit a keyframe for the position. We'll move forward and just kind of adjust the smoke. This is kind of like a really rough manual way of tracking something. Just kind of follow the gun. I mean, our gun is moving and the smoke shouldn't really be moving once it's already in the air. But we'll just give it some movement. You want smoke to move. You don't want it to seem like it's just kind of staying there. So now what we have is some smoke falling from the gun. And since the camera is kind of whipping to the side, Technically, the smoke should be over there, so we'll just move it back to the left side. And again, it should be something very, very subtle. And we'll even change the opacity to around 85%. I'm not sure if you can quite see in the video tutorial, but there is some smoke coming out of the tip of the gun here, as you can see. Maybe even uh, 75%. So essentially, this is what you should do for your muzzle flash. Um, definitely the muzzle flash needs some work um, for the position anyways. So that's looking pretty interesting. Let's go ahead and take a look at how to um, do the second one here. This one's a little bit different. Same technique, but a little bit different. So let's go ahead and take automatic fire 2, bring that in. Let's go ahead and color code these first. So this is all for one character, so we'll make it red. Close those. And this is going to be, I guess, green. This guy is going to be on the top right hand corner. So up here, we'll definitely need to scale it up pretty large. So we're not really actually going to see this muzzle flash. I want the guy to shoot right around pretty much whenever this guy's not shooting. So actually, we should actually um, figure out when this thing shoots and set our marker for it. So first frame, second frame. And I'll just do I'll just do two shots. I don't want I don't want him to shoot too much. Save time for this tutorial. So right over here, we'll just move him back up. Should be somewhere around there. Hit a keyframe for the position rotation. Move forward. And it should be kind of up there as well. So it's kind of out of frame. So we're not really supposed to see the lens flare. I mean or the muzzle flash. It's supposed to be up there anyways. Uh but what we're gonna do is we'll go and copy all the glows that we did for the first muzzle flash so control command C copy it paste it here so now we have that and then we will let's, let's go ahead and just blur this thing out so we'll apply a fast blur and we'll move it above everything so move it above this glow repeat edge pixels and just turn up the glow and then we'll change the blending mode from normal to add So as you can see, we have that kind of that bright light at the very top of the frame to kind of indicate that we are shooting something. And then again, we'll duplicate the special forces base footage. We'll call it light spill 02. And we'll bring it up. And this is going to be his hand here. So we'll move forward around here. And we'll just mass a rough mass around his hand, his gun. Set it to add once again and uh, feather it out maybe 120 pixels we'll hit m on the keyboard to bring the mass path hit a keyframe and we'll just animate it 
So let's see, you get the pen tool. And just move the mass. And in visual effects, these little things, um, you know, they all add up to sell the effect here. So, and we'll just copy um, everything from the first light spell to the second light spell. So the reason why we blurred it out is because we're not really seeing it, the lens flare up here, but we do want to see the kind of the big, large glow of the muzzle flash. So here we are. So we need to animate the opacity of this light spell. So hit T on the keyboard, set it to 65%. Uh, hit a keyframe, move two frames again. We'll fade it off. Go to the next muzzle fire and set the keyframe to 65%. Move forward and set it to zero. Now, again, if you want to be more realistic, just change these values a little bit. You may not want to make it all 65%. You may want to change the values, add some variation here. Now, one last thing in this tutorial, I just want to show you how to do um, a really quick shell ejecting or kind of this uh, shell casing ejecting. So in this particular gun, we don't really see a clear indication of where the, the shell casing would be. So I'm just going to roughly assume visually that it would somewhere it would be kind of like maybe like right here so um, so you know we'll just kind of keep it there it's gonna be happening very fast anyway so we'll scale it down we will um, hit P for the position hit a keyframe when he fires it or maybe a frame after he fires it trim it and we'll move you know uh, let's just let's see here we'll just move it down below the frame and we'll easy ease these things so hit F9 so now we have this we have little handles here and I'll just take it and just kind of sway the path so let's do a quick ramp preview on that that's about right so that's about the right speed around right here so we'll just keep on duplicating it every time he shoots the gun so right here he shoots it so we'll duplicate this and we'll just shift it over here one frame after he shoots it and we'll just move the position of this the path of this bullet so the bullets won't be flying the exact same way as the previous bullet we'll duplicate it right around here we'll place it right here and we may need to position the starting position and then we'll definitely need to change the ending position here. So definitely always change the, the ending position of the gun or the of the bullet. But we can always... And sometimes you may need to change the starting position of the gun. So right there, the starting position for this shell casing should be around right there. And you know, you keep on doing that, eventually you'll get some pretty cool stuff. So now what we have is shell casing is kind of just flying out of the gun. And it looks kind of funny because it's kind of just appearing. But again, it'll be happening so fast that you won't really notice it. So we just have, to have some bolts flying down. And if we enable the motion blur for pretty much all the bullet shell casings, as well as the automatic fire, because the automatic fire does have some position keyframes applied to it and we'll, you know, we'll just apply um, motion blur to pretty much everything besides the light spell layers and that'll add some more realism here and we just enable for the comp um, you can see that the, the bullet sh shell casing kind of just blends in so what you see is pretty much a blur of shell casings flying around and it seems very very subtle but again it really does help sell the effect so if I um, turn off for a second find some shell casings here and we we'll do some quick color correction so we'll apply curves, and then we'll apply effect, color correction, hue and saturation. We'll definitely lower down the saturation. We'll decrease the brightness. And we'll add some red to it because our overall shot is a little bit uh, warm. Decrease the blues, maybe increase the greens a little bit. It's looking a little bit better, so maybe before, after, and you know, decrease the saturation just a little bit, decrease the lightness, and then maybe play around with the contrast. We don't want it to be too contrasty. 
you know, something like that. That looks decent. But then with the motion blur on, you can barely see it. So you can kind of see the bullets kind of flying down here. Looks very cool. We have some reacting lighting. Let's do a quick adjustment layer. We'll call it Mojo. And I like to add Mojo on these kind of things because this is pretty much what Mojo was made for. These kind of quick action shots here. Um, which we'll is decrease the Mojo. Maybe decrease the punch. Play around with the balance. Something like that. Make some muzzle flash look a little bit warmer. Pretty cool. And um, overall, the project looks a little bit um, stretched so maybe we can uh, make it into a new comp and then we'll just maybe shrink it a little add some fake letterboxing because before it looked pretty stretched um, so we'll just add that this, this is just me messing around here so what we have now is so of course this could use a little bit more work. Of course you can do some more color correction, some more uh, color grading on the muzzle flash. It looks a little bit too hot, it looks a little bit too intense and sharp. In fact, one thing you can do is actually go to the muzzle flash here. And because it looks kind of sharp, unlike our footage, we can apply a quick fast blur to the, the muzzle flash and we'll set the blur amount to maybe one pixel, maybe two. Uh, 1.5, apply it, apply it to the next muzzle flash. And of course, you can add smoke elements to the, um, the the top of this gun here. Add more smoke puffs to uh, the other uh, shots. But essentially, you kind of get the idea of what to do. Just fine tune it, uh, work on it. Add some more little elements. Remember, the fine details do count. So this is what we have now. Now, if you wanted to make it seem a little bit more, you know, more intense, definitely um, composite some sparks to the end of the gun here. Add some sparks flying after the, the muzzle flash and all that stuff. So just, you know, have fun, be crazy, add your muzzle flashes everywhere, everything you do. And while you're at it, just adds a whole bunch of lens flares like Michael Bay and you'll be, you know, creating the next Transformer movie. So this is just a really quick, rough, basic tutorial on how to composite muzzle flashes to kind of get you guys started. And to help you guys notice that little fine details that you need to do when creating these little effects. So again, the fine little details really sell the effects. Keep that in mind. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you guys have any comments, feel free to leave them down below in the comments. I read all of them. I reply to all of them. And I really love hearing your feedback on tutorials like these. So hopefully you guys had a lot of fun. Definitely create cool stuff and leave them down below for me to see. I love watching them. And until next time, guys, my name is Vincent Nguyen from the Creative Dojo. And I'll see you guys in the next tutorial. Bye, guys.